Welcome to End Generation Project, rebroadcast of Daily Excellence Podcast number 35, where we join Pastor Paul Begley and Mike from the Council of Time as they meet for their weekly interview and discuss current world events and how they relate directly to End Times Prophecy. Titled, Insightful Discussion Pastor Paul with Mike from C.O.T. Beast Kingdom. Join Pastor Paul and Michael from Council of Time. Take 10 questions from Pastor Paul's audience. Michael gives direction on navigating through current world events and also other spiritual complexities we seem to have all around us. Discover the importance of standing firm against worldly influences, their wickedness, and embracing biblical truths. Don't miss out on this profound message. Now, before we get to the rebroadcast of Insightful Discussion Pastor Paul with Mike from COT Beast Kingdom, remember for more Council of Time content, be sure to visit and show your support for Michael and the whole gang over at the Council of Time at their only official website, linked in the description below. Also, Pastor Paul has a new book scheduled for release. More information, visit his link in the description. Now, let's get into today's Pastor Paul and Mike from Council of Time, episode number 35. Insightful discussion, Pastor Paul with Mike from COT Beast Kingdom. Blessings. Mike from around the world. Mike. Pastor Paul. <laughs> How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Can't get through to the other line. I wonder why not. I mean, I don't. I have no idea. Uh, you know. Maybe it's Hey, it's good thing I got two lines and, and good thing you know both those numbers so that one way or the other. I always have them both here. I never know what's going to happen. All right. It's a good thing. Yeah. Good thing. Yep. Mike, good to talk to you tonight. I hope you're feeling good. Good to be here. I'm good to go. All right, all right. We got a lot to hear. I I did something crazy, and that was I asked people over on my Patreon channel, "Hey, if you got a question for Mike tonight, just shoot it over at me." Whoa! Did we get bombarded <laughs> with like a hundred questions? Let uh, him rip. All right, so I picked ten, and uh, we're gonna go at it. Before I start on them, I'm gonna ask you about Vladimir Putin today. Four things he did. You know, we had that. We almost had a collision up in space with their satellite and ours. Yeah. Um. He uh, threatened NATO and the West with nuclear war if they even think about bringing troops into Ukraine to fight them. Yeah. Um, he has the Palestinians are sitting in, his, in the Kremlin tonight asking him to help them put together a new government. What's yeah. that about? And the fourth thing, um, I can't quite remember. Oh, he helped the Iranians get a, to launch a rocket. Uh, actually just help them teach them the technology, and they did it, and it would have the ability to have a nuclear payload on it. So that all happened today, and he gave it, you know, in its State of His Nation address, he did threaten the world with nukes. So your thoughts, is is the hook in the jaw is my question with with, with the Palestinians and, and where, everywhere he's at. Is Are we moving close to Gog and Magog here? Sure we are. And uh, concerning Iran, if, you know, if a country... Uh, gave the USA one point, uh, I think it was one point uh, two trillion dollars. I think that we would help them with anything. That's exactly what Iran did with uh, Russia. Wow, that's a lot of money. Well, where'd they get that money? Oh, they're making it, Pastor Paul. They Off have the broken oil. loose from. They they've broken loose. From, they are a superpower when it comes to oil, right? Yeah. Superpower. Yeah. In fact, it here's what's so strange. All the money that's locked up in deals with Iran, right? The they they don't need it. They don't need it. They made that statement um, a few times. They don't need it. And China, they paid China for a few things too. Keep in mind, Iran has had some of the best scientists on the face of the earth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, they have been launching vehicles and satellites for some time now. They've been using uh, Russian launch vehicles to do it because of the um, some of the military sanctions against them, right? So they can't really get away with everything, but Russia can. Nobody's going to shoot anything at uh, uh, you know a Russia Russian uh, launch pad, and so they're going to do that more. So they're positioning themselves. They need optics over Israel. Make no mistake, 
what they're doing okay. is to get uh, absolute optics over Israel. And just in case nobody noticed, uh, Israel is in the doghouse with the rest of the world Yep. right now. And they're going to do what they have to do by force, which means Putin, just as he did in Syria. You remember he befriended uh, Syria. Yep. And, of course, his troops set up a naval base there. Yes. And uh, that base hasn't gone anywhere. He's going to do the same thing. With Palestinian people. So Same do you so exact. so when I threw that out there just a minute ago, that I, I believe we're going to see Russian troops in Gaza, uh that's not far fetched, am I? No, no, that's right on the money. It's the only way to who else would provide security for uh for those people in Gaza? Who else? And so in order to keep that peace and to have a force multiplier in that land. If Russian troops are in that land, Israel will not attack them anymore. When Russia, when, when Israel does not attack them anymore, right? When they're not fighting, they're going to build up their forces. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be Palestinian Russian forces, right? And this is one part that gets me. In Russia, it's, they are already overrun with Muslims already, right? Right, uh, They're they are. embedded into Russia. I suspect strongly that it's not going to be actually Russia that will launch anything at uh, the U.S., but it will be the Islamic world that will launch things at the U.S. because they will absolutely seize or by mission of action with the military be in position to launch weapons at the U.S. with coordination uh, with Iran. It's going to be a dual a, a dual thing there. So we're nobody sa- can attack is nobody can touch Israel so long as the USA is positioned where we are, right? They know that, so they have to knock us out too. If they if they ever think about uh, where they are, if they think about disarming Israel, right? They're going to disarm us too. They're going to try it. Uh, China is is their positions are tactical, not only for Taiwan. Taiwan, but for backup with Middle Eastern uh, forces acting upon the USA. Wow. This has everybody, you know, people have uh, hairs coming up on the back of their neck, looking at the, you know, the multitude of tactical plans that point back to the same thing that we are, you know, the world is positioning itself to really. Uh, I never do thought. Quite a few things. I never, you know, I always saw Russia. In Syria, coming over the Golan Heights, I always seen Russia teaming up with Persia and maybe with Turkey and and with uh, you know the Ethiopian and the Libyans. I never saw, I never seen it coming. Russia setting up shop, becoming a part of a Palestinian military force in Gaza. But this, you know, you know the whole world. Yeah. You said they're going to disarm Israel. Yeah. Uh, there's this is a power move. I see it coming. I mean, who, I mean, yeah. what? Well, it's a strategically brilliant move by the Palestinians, sure it is. isn't sure it? it is. Same thing they did in Syria. Once the Russian uh, troops were there, we couldn't do what we wanted to do, right? So, so do you think now? Um, uh, think about it. Israel saying, no, 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 no. There's not going to be a two state solution. We're going to run, and we're the security of Gaza. How does the Russians get in there? I mean, how did they get the feet on the ground and say, I'm sorry, guys, but this is how it's going to work? Because they hold they hold ground with Israel right now, right? Israel actually needs, they think they need uh, Russia as part of their uh, existence in the Middle East, right? And so Russia is going to capitalize on that. Brilliant. And that's just the way it is. Once, uh, you know, all this will be set up fairly fast. It will be a forced type of uh, deal. We will see the parting of the land. And, uh, you know, well, everybody in, who knows prophecy knows what happens from there. Yep. Wow. Wow. So let's stay tuned, folks, with this. Because, again, prophecy is moving so fast. I mean, I wake up today and, and, and the Palestinians have united. Fatah, Hamas, the PLO. <laughs> And the Palestinian Authority, they're all four sitting in Moscow in the Kremlin working like on clockwork. A, like clockwork, working on a new government. Yep. Just, like, just like clockwork. Oh, it's unbelievable. Prophecy is happening so fast. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. 
All right, it Mike. Is. Let's get into these questions that folks have for you. And you said fire away, so let's do it. The first one is, ask Mike, can a solar can the solar eclipse cause an earthquake here on the Earth? Uh, that's a good, good uh, question. Well, when you're dealing with uh, solar eclipses, of course, you're dealing with uh, the moon has tidal force effects on the Earth, right? So we don't have a tide without the moon, right? Mm-hmm. That means the moon has gravitational influence on the surface of the Earth. That's true. Um, so what happens when the moon, or, well, the sun also has that same gravitational effect on the Earth, right? Yeah. Same thing. So what happens when the moon, which is, by the way, right, by the way, uh, the moon is about 400 times, or the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, Right. It's and it's about 400 times further away. Now, who thought that? Is that coincidence? No, no. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't yeah. You don't get those numbers that precise anyway. When the moon obstructs the sun, it will also obstruct its gravitational pull. Okay. Right? So then you're going to have a displacement effect on the surface of the planet. It is measurable. And often, sometimes it can cause an earthquake. Now, it always depends on what, how close the moon is to the Earth, right? For and example, it's going to be close this time. It's going to be yeah, close. If we, had a, if we had a full moon, right? right uh, yes, it's going to cause some effects on the Earth. And the Earth is, um, w- when you're dealing with those gravitational forces with the Earth, they will begin to affect, uh, you know, certain plates. Uh, with that effect, you're going to have uh, earthquakes. So, yes, the answer is yes. It, it can absolutely um cause those effects and and it doesn't, absolutely it doesn't have to happen right during that four and a half minutes right but it, this... but it will affect those uh you know the shallow thrust faults it will um, tend to affect those so yeah it can happen it can absolutely happen and it can be a delayed you know a delayed type thing there right yeah. right all right great question and, and a, a great answer to help us understand all right now speaking of this solar eclipse coming on april the 8th which we know how you know how there's so many issues with it the comet that's coming around the sun you'll be able to see it in the shadow of the moon and you know all this but this solar eclipse the first one when it went across america it went through seven cities by the name or or towns named salem jerusalem um this time it's going through seven cities six of them are nineveh and one is jonah do you think that has any spiritual significance (laughs) You want me to? Well, if yeah. you give me some latitude, I'll answer that. I'll give you um, some latitude. Go right ahead. First of all, I, I don't believe with the common theory that anything we see in space, you know, coalesced from molten rock. I don't believe that. Uh, you know, because all planets and all moons have a rim on them, a rim, like somebody welded them shut, right? Okay. All of them do. I mean, precise. So I don't believe the coalesce factor. I believe they were engineered to a degree and put there. Right? Okay. So you're saying uh, so, man man actually knew this was coming and put the cities, named them there. Yeah, I believe that man is highly influenced by co- our spiritual coordination okay. factor. Right? Okay. For example, for example, um, you, there, there are so many different cases in people's families. A spirit comes in. It's obvious. Uh, an argument breaks out, and then all of a sudden, they don't know why they're in that argument, right? And it was influenced by some strange energy people are feeling, right? Which is spiritual type things. Um, same thing happens with leadership. They get together, they start doing things. Who's guiding their thoughts? Because if anybody ever examines their own thoughts, it's not necessarily them thinking it's somebody speaking to them by way of their mind and if they entertain that of course it's going to drip right down into the heart then it becomes an action so i believe that these events as far as building things in the world are influenced right and i also believe that god orchestrates he allows or disallows so nothing can happen unless he allows it um i believe that you know things are going according to his plan always his plan. Uh, by the way, if he knows the very count of the hairs on our head, and the hairs on our head that count changes frequently, right? Right. And time does not. Time is not for God. Time is for us. Then, in fact, 
in one day, right? If he, he can count every particulate in the human body for everybody who ever existed and everything else, you know, multiple times throughout the day. Just unbelievable. anything he desires. And so he's, I believe he's always in control like that. Right. So these cities, when they're put up like that, uh, I believe they're highly influenced because everything is going to match prophecy in the end. And I believe prophecy is not fortune telling to me. Prophecy no. is what God is going to do. Right. Not what God can do, not what might happen as a result of God, but what God is going to do. And so having said that, uh, prophecy is very finite, right? And things always adjust themselves to fit prophecy because from the beginning, the plan goes forward. Things begin to function and maneuver and all these things happen. So with this, with these uh, eclipses, and celestial happenings just like genesis says they're for signs and for seasons or i should say signals right yeah they're yep. for their signals they're appointed times i don't believe they i don't believe in coincidence i don't believe in that stuff um but but they are for appointed times and certainly it's an appointed time also i have to bring up something else if jesus said if, if he said that People were buying and selling, marrying, giving into marriage until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also, it's going to be like that, the coming of the Son of Man. He said something, though. He said they knew not. They knew nothing. Right. They didn't know a thing until the flood came and took them all away, which tells me that the signs of the Father are very subtle, meant for the saints, not for the world. Right. Because he also told some people, Jesus told some people in this time, who warned you to flee? Right from the you know, what the father's come. bringing yeah. right because because they had a they had an idea as to things that were supposed to happen in other words they were not supposed to know that prophecy no right so he's saying how did that's you meant know for us. Yeah. that's right that's meant for us and so these signs like these eclipses the world is just going to say well you know scientifically we have this you know arc and this inertia and this that and the other but with god's people we can't help but to notice these celestial things it's always going to be some type of tap in our spirit and we cannot receive it like everybody else i believe that the body of christ is born that way amen they're born that way to see more than the average person right yeah. and they feel it spiritually so i believe it's very prophetic i also believe that unlike any other time this time we're going to have instant consequence to mm, these subtle okay. signs okay that's what i believe instant consequences to these signs yep. All right, we'll be watching for that because that's that's huge. That we better pay attention. Uh, number three question, Mike. Uh, you mentioned to us a, uh, maybe a year ago, a little longer, about a, a, a steel door in the Arctic. Any 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 information you can share with us on that? What's behind yeah, the door? It, I mean, help us. It's like it's like steel. It's black. It's, it's more like uh, granite, but it has the strength of steel. It is like steel. It's not, not quite steel. It's a different material. Okay. It's a very big door. Uh, the fact that this door exists is a big deal. No door like that should ever exist, right? Who's no. going to build a door like that? I don't know. That a, that a squirrel could move. A squirrel could move that door. So it is perfectly, it, you know, it's cold up there, right? Now, yeah. How can something... For all those years, be so perfectly balanced that uh, you know you could you could probably move that thing with a human hair if you held it there long enough. As far as what's behind the door, um, there have been observations. I didn't directly observe anything behind the door. Right. All I know is this: uh, those folks who are foolish enough to partake of it are just not the same anymore. Right. I know that there are three groups of scientific teams okay. that they're not allowing to talk to anybody. And these guys won't talk to anybody anyway. They, so, they look like they were dead coming back. So you're saying there has been some people who actually opened the door and saw what was there. Yes. Yeah. Some folks have peered in there. OK. They have peered in there. And but I do know that the, the those scientific teams that were responsible for you know, testing the environment and everything else. They're not the same, right? It's almost like they were horrified and that life no longer mattered. So they observed something that was uh, 
highly unusual. Well, we're, we're somebody, and it, it disturbed them. Somebody on Earth, I mean, I, I take it humans built a door and we're trying to conceal something, or, or was this supernaturally built? Well, it's old. It's very, uh, I believe in the stories of old in the Bible. I have no choice. I have to. But um, I believe there were giants in the Earth, and I yeah. believe those giants were half human, half angel. And I believe that those um, th- those same things had immense amounts of knowledge. I do not subscribe to anything coming from another planet here. I believe that everything has always been here, which is why everything returns back to the sea. I believe that when they're bound in flesh like that and spirit, but they have no place in the heavens, they have to resort to technology uh, for other things, but but they do have spiritual powers. I believe that many of them are dead. Some are in stasis, you could say. Uh, that's a fact. They are in stasis, some. But there are lots of relics concerning these things, right? And to see those relics can change you. And I believe they did that. I do. Because the that material that is there, right? But to my understanding, can only, they're materials from Earth, but they can only be put together like that in space. The only other way in a space. person could do okay. that. Now, right? Okay, 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 I got it, I got you. So they're, they're from Earth, the materials are from Earth. Right. But somehow they have been, like crystals, grow a specific way in space, right? Um, with, without gravity or with, uh, you know, a, a loss of this type pressure. So something weird has happened whoever made that i had more knowledge than we had plus some of the uh, plant life that's around there um some of the dating methods suggest these things are super old that door is super old like that door is part of the earth itself wow and i did hear more than a dozen times in my life that earth was a mechanism more of a mechanism and these are people who were talking seriously Right. So not the, you know, we're taught in school how it's molten rock and, you know, you got a bunch of fluid going around this and the other. No, it's a little more controlled than that. Much more controlled than that. And it's more of a mechanism than anything else. In fact, those same folks suggested that to understand a human cell is to understand the nature of the earth. Unbelievable. So yeah. it's so these so we're talking these 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 doors are ancient. Probably done right. by ancient right. uh, giants, and they had technologies that we're not aware of, and or we're underestimating. We're really underestimating these giants, aren't we? Yeah. Well, Pastor, from experience, I'll say that um, mankind, most of mankind, they're only you know they're only aware of probably maybe five percent of what the uh, of things on the earth, which means. The greater percentage of things on the earth is unseen. We can't see it. It's almost like we're locked outside of a house, right? We can't get in to see what's inside the house, but we marvel at the windows. We marvel at the doors. And we become experts on that, and we say that we're experts. We haven't seen anything. We haven't gone inside the house yet. So the earth is the same way. What we see on the surface, on the external parts of the earth, um, that's what we accept, but we have no idea uh, of anything else, no concept of anything else. And it's a good thing, too. I think that God protects people from that, because if the average person were to see that, they couldn't accept life. They they wouldn't be normal anymore. They couldn't smile anymore. They couldn't just walk down the street with an innocent mind anymore. They wouldn't be free like that anymore, be too heavy of a burden. Uh, they would they would have thoughts of too many potential things that could absolutely go wrong. But one thing they would know, they would know that they've been protected from day one, right? Yep. And that nobody alive on this earth or anything living on this earth cannot live unless it's protected. In that respect, they would know that God was real. And so do other people who have these, uh, well, who know certain things, have gone into certain places. They do change for better or for worse. In other words, they either believe in the Father or they, they solely serve Satan himself. Mm. There's no in-between. No in-between. Mm. All right. All right. So uh, let's talk about another question. I'm going to ask you about the Statue of Liberty in a minute, but first I want to ask you this one. 
and I know you gave me a big no yes last time, but I'm going to ask you this way. Since we've talked about the 40-day big event that you couldn't speak about, we went and found out that 40 days from the day you said that was actually the Red Heifer Shabbat. And that comes around every year, but this year in particular, we have four Special. Red Heifers. Is, yeah. is that the event... And that's huge. Well, I mean, uh, is that the event you're talking about? We'll, we'll know more as we get closer past the ball. But I'll tell you this. I hope that uh, everybody is ready prior to that time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, that helps me understand that we're that – we're, because I'll just say this. If it is that – if this and I made a phone call. First of all, Israel Hall found this for me and said, Pastor, I went and checked, and I found 40 days from the day. He said, this is what's going to happen. I said, that's huge. That would be that gigantic security issue, and I can't probably say much. So I said, okay, let me, let, me run, let me do something. I picked up the phone. I called one of the leading rabbis in Israel and had a nice conversation with him and asked him that direct question. And there was a lot, Not of, too much uh, there was a lot of stuttering, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah. said, I can't give you a yes or no, but, man, you better yeah. be praying. So – uh, this would be huge. I'll just say this. It would be unbelievable, and this might be possibly the reason for the attack on October 7th to begin with. Um, I mean, I think the, the, this is a big, big deal. Israel is tied to so many events in the Middle East. Think about something. Okay. Israel is the heart and the core of both blessings and the disruptions in the Middle East right disruptions yeah. yes, by way yes. of the islamic world and and blessings by way of uh you know those who observe israel it is impossible number one for them to exist in the way they do the soil has changed uh by its you know they enhanced certain things right but the soil changed far before they enhanced it they studied it and replicated what happened to the soil so they can produce things that nobody else can produce. Um, animals love that place. They love that place. Uh, I guess it has a good vibe to them, right? I, I believe that they can they can actually sense some extra things about Israel. It is, it is truly a marvel uh, in the earth, but it is responsible for much of what we see in the Middle East, right? So any religious... Uh, happening in Israel, it's right? Huge. It's going to ripple throughout the entire earth. Right. It will always ripple throughout the entire earth. And if anybody, you know, all you have to do is observe, go through history and see anything they did uh, by way of religion has rippled all throughout the U.S., all throughout the U.S., all throughout China, all throughout everywhere, yeah. everywhere. It always does this. And every, and, and most importantly, the thing that gets me is every time they do something like that, or something happens, or there's a, a progress spiritually, it reflects upon humanity for some reason, right? Nobody can doubt that right now humanity is different, right? mentally different, right? Right. That everybody, not just the USA has division as far as uh, politics. Every nation is divided by way of politics, right? Yes, The yes. people are turning against their governments. They don't trust their governments. It's never been like this before. And uh, this is happening all over the earth. All the while, uh, it happened in Israel first, and then the rest of the world endured what happened there first. So these events that will happen in Israel are key to, uh, to the existence of a lot of nations around it. Amen. Well, one thing's for sure, and I've been there, and you know, and and you've been in there as well. And you know, when you go up to the northern part and you see Dan, where there's a lot of pagan worship, there's the gates of hell up there. There's all these different pagan worshiping uh, locations. We know the giants, yes. the Nephilim, were there when Joshua came in and had to take them out. To, yeah. to I mean, there's just been. I mean, this small little slither of land is is the cradle of hum, of humanity and and eternity. And it's just yes. you can't. It's unbelievable what's going. And so, what's coming is also going to be affected. Every little thing, every religious thing that happens, is going to be, no doubt about that. Oh yeah. Uh, all right, Mike. Here's the next question for you that people are asking. Okay. What's under the Statue of Liberty? Ugh. Oh, well, okay. Help us. Uh, <laughs> that, that statue has a uh, weird, uh, very weird history. 
right? Okay. It was it was given to us, but it was specially made. I know that a lot of people they believe it's the Statue of Liberty, but I challenge that historically. If they look historically at what that actually is with statues in uh, barbaric areas in the Middle East, they'll find that there's an identical statue <clears throat> that is not the Statue of Liberty. And that's it. It was actually set on top something, the, the, the bones of something, right? What? So the big one that we have. Yeah. The waters around it are filthy. Uh huh. The bones are, are the the um, Statue of Liberty itself is, you know, they encourage people to go up and down, do weird things with it. It's almost like they have people worship it, right? Yes. But if it had a relic underneath it of something very ancient, then all those people who are giving it a type of worship, because mm. they do have hope in it, don't mm, they? They yeah. have hope in it, not understanding what it truly is. They have hope in it. Um, they're essentially giving themselves over to something that is cloaked in a uh, something else, right? It's almost like it has a um, the Statue of Liberty is a cloak for something else. Yet you have people who readily give themselves over to the ideology of it, and. Uh, that's probably not a good thing, right? So probably you're saying not a this, this symbol the, or this statue was actually used. I don't know if it was used for other things, uh, maybe other types of pagan worship, maybe. And itself, the, the statue itself yes, is, you know, people call it the Statue of Liberty, but it's very ancient. Is is it the, uh, like uh, is it one of the Greek gods or, uh, or goddesses? No, it's it. No, well, it's uh, it's it's um, it's one of those new type things that is very ancient, very very ancient, um, but but very dark, and it looks it's they didn't change anything, but it's very dark. It's a twin to something else, which is also a twin to something else. So it was made from a smaller version of it which was made from the original right now with the internet right now people can if they were to go and match these pictures they would find an ancient deity okay. that looks just like that most importantly uh they would find what it what it um what it holds how it stands is exactly the same right the dimensions are exactly proportioned I mean, exactly proportioned. But this statue sat atop ruins. And they specifically wanted a special copy here in the USA, right? Now, it is said that uh, the relic is right in there. And when I say relic, I mean a living, something that was alive. Right so, in there. So, okay. So the entity that was alive, is it? The bones of it uh, is still left inside. It is. It, that's that could be a rumor. That right could be in there. A rumor. Right in there. So then, when people worship it ignorantly, they have no idea what they're doing or, or who no, they're they giving homage to. That's right. There are many things like that within the USA. Take for example, there. I hate to say this, but there is a very special statue who looks at the ceiling, who has a staff. Right. A okay. Staff. And uh, they sit in a very prominent place within the USA. Hmm. And a lot of people, just about everybody is acquainted with it. But every day they pay it respects. And I'm not talking about for a dead person, right? Um, is it in no the president. capital? Is it in the cap? Is he? Is in the well, capital? it's right there in the. It's right there in the, the dead center of leadership, right? Yeah, you're right on the money. So, but no president carried a staff. No. No president carried us. No president governed what floats above. When you when you look above at the domed ceiling, yeah, you'll see a representation of of other gods from different pantheons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All disguised, but the one that's not disguised is the one that sits in in the king's chair with the staff, governing everything of them, right? And what did they do in that place? 
there's something underneath that place too. So anyway, things are all backward and upside down, but they're real. They're very real. And, um, well, that's just the way that well, we, is. We, yeah, okay. There's a lot of Masonic uh, uh, symbolism and more than just symbolism. Uh, <laughs> the whole city itself laid out uh, specifically with Washington's Monument and the whole nine yards. I mean, it's all tied to this um, ancient mythology type uh, worship. Um, and it's dedicated yearly, every year. Really? By really? leadership. Wow. It's a dedication. Is there some secret Imagine. meetings that go on kind of in the dead of the night sometimes? Once there are year? always. Well, if you look, you know what, past ball, they show congressional meetings a lot, right? Yes. And sometimes when they're passing a bill or something like that on the floor, when everybody goes, when they're in an argument or something like that, and somebody stands up, they'll give a, they'll tap a button on their shirt, two fingers. Then everybody's quiet. Even the big ones, even the big, you know, the big bad senators. Tap down there, a button quiet. on their shirt and it. They'll it, tap a button with two fingers on their shirt and everybody's quiet. Everybody's quiet. Wow. Now, if everybody goes quiet when somebody does that, then they know what's going on, right? Yes. So in this day and age, people had to be very careful of the great facade that most have already fallen for. I, I You know what? In, in my life, the only thing I can absolutely trust is my Lord. I mean Amen. that with all my heart, because everything, when you look peek behind the door uh, of these things, and I know a lot of people would just love to come forward and tell it, but since we're in this environment, I can right. say this, that most of those folks put on double faces. You don't know who they are behind closed doors. No, that's true. You really don't. You don't. It, it may sneak out every so often, right? It's kind of like the, the, the Putin is the devil or saint and then america's a devil or saint but gangsters get in wars all the time yeah and by the way those two men right they're not giving praise to christ on sunday saturday monday tuesday wednesday in view of all the people because the lord said if you deny me before men i'll deny you before the angels so why would anybody who loves the lord hide anything like that very good point you wouldn't nope no, you wouldn't. I, I'm glad you, you brought wouldn't. this up. My book, Revelation 9-11, guys, if you want to get a copy, get your pre-order in now. Go to Amazon.com, and they're shipping them all on uh, on the 26th of March, okay? I got one copy, but that's that's for me. But they're shipping them all. They release them all to the world on March 26th at Amazon.com. So check that out, and be sure you get yours because we talk about every secret society there is that we could, could con find, and I'm sure there's others that we don't know about. But we do cover it, and it's part of the New World Order and the, and the overall beast kingdom in the Bible. So, And I'll tell you, my co-author, Troy Anderson, is a Pulitzer Prize-nominated journalist. He can dig stuff out I never even dreamed of. So it's it's an articulated, and we with uh, what God had already revealed to me and all the things we studied, it's a tremendous read and uh, it's filled with information. So don't forget that. Be sure. All right, Mike. Uh, two th okay, Bitcoin. What? Bitcoin? All right. You know, I think about a month ago or so, you said, oh, oh by the way, Bitcoin will probably go to $210,000 a coin. At the time you said it, it was around thirty-seven dollars or $38,000 a coin. Yesterday it went to sixty four thousand. It's it's setting at sixty one or sixty two right now. So, is it be, has it begun? Is the is the rise of this begun uh, with Bitcoin? Oh yeah, yes, yes it has. They're going to absolutely use that system. Look who bought into uh, Bitcoin, BlackRock. Yes. Okay. Okay. Big point. Okay. Why would they ever do that? Yeah, you're right. Right. Uh, who does that? So what you see here is a system within a system. Right. They want, as I said, again, if any private citizen had too much money, right, they don't need the government. They can act if the people had more money than the government. Uh oh, they don't need that can not happen. No, no, right? never that can't happen. happen. No. And so now you have many corporations jumping in with Bitcoin to get Bitcoin right now. They're going to continue to do this because they have to regulate Bitcoin in a different way. They also have replicated that same system and countries are involved heavily because it will be that system 
right? That will be morphed into something else. Then we're going to have a great security problem by way of the cyber world, right? Once we have that problem and people actually take a hit, they're going to want some extra biometric security, something nobody can hack. People are going to get tired of hackers. They're going to be hurt by hackers. They're going to be hurt by countries who attempt to hack all sorts of things. And when they release the first biometric standard, everybody's going to have that. So It'll likely be on a bracelet. Okay, this that's, bracelet, one, that's one of the questions. Right. Uh, tell us about the bracelet, so keep going. That's going to allow a person to contain and use a cell phone. A cell phone will not have passwords or anything on it anymore. It's going to look for something external, connected to the person, right? They don't need, right now in this day and age, you do not need the blood for DNA, not anymore, right? They no. can parse what a person's DNA is from their skin. They can do this all day long, yes. and that's done electronically. So when you have a bracelet that's constantly validating the person, right, uh, then that bracelet is the authentication for that device, right? So they're getting people used to this already. The first step was to get people used to digital transactions. Most people right now do digital transactions versus any other transaction, yes. and they're totally at peace about it. Yes, they right? do. That debit, was the first step. Debit cards, credit cards, right, right, exactly. The second step is consolidation, which means your your license, your, you know, whatever you have, plus your digital stuff is all going on one identifiable thing. And then they have, of course, the biometrics, which will seal the deal. Now, what that does is if you can only access your devices and make transactions because it will check your body to make the transaction, once that's in play, and they've already got that figured out, once that's in play, then, of course, things will happen. The world may break out, right, uh, in a bigger war. I believe a war will have already started by them, but a much bigger war. Uh, when people are displaced after war, they only want one thing after war, and that is they want home again, yes, right? Yes. So if people want home again, all they have to do is agree not to let the old ways back into the new kingdoms. Gotcha. And there you are, right? So in other words, first they have to get the bracelet system, which is a, a, new, a new currency, a, a global currency system biometrically uh, used and, and accessed, but you can't really implement something like that because people won't, won't want to do it right now. It has to, because there's been catastrophic, cataclysmic events, war, devastation to the point that people are like, okay, do anything to get back to normal again. And this will make it easier to implement. Everything this. will be in place, yeah. yeah. Now, 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 because think about this. When the hacking begins, right, and people have a few bucks, and hacking begins. They don't want somebody to just up and take their money. No. Right? You don't want to wake up and see an empty bank account because then that's going to test everything about everybody. Right. Everything about everybody. Now, so they're going to have that biometric device. Right? That device will simply allow you to utilize the Internet, to utilize your, your, your cell phone, right, to utilize your all your other electronic devices to manage your life. That's what that bracelet will do. The, the key of the bracelet is to read your DNA on a continuous basis on your body. So if you're not wearing your bracelet, your devices are, nobody can use your devices. As soon as you put that bracelet on, you don't need, you don't need passwords or anything else. Yep. To, to, to get into your car, to run your car, all that stuff will happen with the bracelet. They got people used to digital transactions. Yep. When they mandated, um, the phones be digital, communications digital, your bank accounts, all that stuff is digital. It's on cards now. People are used to that. It's normal. And so now they're going to have, there's going to be an issue with security, with hacking. It's really going to start to eat away at many different things. People are going to, they're going to go with it. They're they, going to they demand. Find, the bracelet will not be the mark. Because yeah. it does not require a person to take an oath to any other deity. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But. After after some calamities, right? Get to get closer. Things are going to be torn down, right? People are going to say, "Hey, we we want home again. We want to get right. away from this war stuff. And we want home again." And a solution will be right there for people. Say, "Hey, if you agree to step into this new era and not utilize these old ways that ruined the whole world, right? Come right. on in. 
you just have to agree to do so and so and you're you're good to go and those who want a normal life are going to have to renounce everything they ever stood for mm, right so they can it. step into it. this new paradigm and there you are if those who those who if this is going to be a real test of faith for a lot yeah, of people because if uh you know if people can fool people now but when the when the rubber meets the road it's going to be do you choose the lord and savior and have your integrity I, intact with that I, I, or would you want normalcy i think that people have we get lost in the, in the translation people are more uh, obsessed or infatuated by the technology afraid of the technology than what the real problem is and that is you have to sell your soul to participate you have to yep. deny christ you have to literally uh, reject uh christianity uh, the gospel religion and all in its in its so you have to sign off on this and so your point is we're using debit cards that's not the mark of the beast we could pay for things on on our phones and computers that's not the mark of the beast we'll get a bracelet that will be biometric that we can operate with that won't even be the mark of the beast it's when you sign off when they finally say you have to renounce jesus you cannot participate and think you can have a religious, uh, right. th- and this is where, so people just got to, don't be so freaked out, but stay focused on Jesus and, and, uh, and understand the time you're in. But, but each step is closer, right, Mike? Each step is closer. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they're setting everything up. It is, uh, it's on pace. They're not behind. And, um, you know, and, and more things are controlled than what people think. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like um, a lot of people. I hear a lot of people say, well, they're trying to kill us. I, I think that's part of an error. If yeah. everybody would think about something. First of all, if they wanted to kill us and they haven't done it by now, they're no good at it. And they can't <laughs> do it. Right. So but here's what they're doing. They began this a long time ago. Right. Some people have heard about a special book that every single president gets. And in that book are a set of mandates that they have to, as part of the presidency, they have to agree with it. Part of that is population control, is not that, just for the U.S. Is that, right? Mac- is that Machiavelli, the art of war? No, I believe that was that came before that. Actually. Okay, okay. They, this problem was identified a long time ago okay. among the, the – that was in the king's list, if you're familiar with that. That was actually – that came from there. okay. So anyway, there have been programs and more programs and tests and more tests, and they have been successful every step of the way. Here's what I mean by that. If you look at how people are dying these days, right, and at the age and what they're, you know, when they die and who's being born and what type people are being born, then you'll start to see it. These guys have programs called, called uh, Big Pharma. Right. Nobody's opposing big pharma. Everybody's complicit with big pharma. Yeah. Right. Because it helps you. Let's go ahead and face it. If you feel awful, they have a you know quick fix at the store. Go get it. Right. Seems harmless. Uh, but it, it believe me, they're not killing people overnight. No, no that's it's not slow the way death. You do it. It's slow death. Population right. control is to limit. Right. To limit the population or to. But more specifically, to limit certain types of people. Right. Certain times. And just in case you have not noticed, the atmosphere of the entire populace is altered. It is changed. Mm. Children are not the same as they used to be. How do they do this? If you shorten the lifespan of a person by 10 years, they're not going to notice. Right. You will have effectively limited a specific piece of the population. Right. If you have maybe uh, two out of five deaths every you know two months with babies nobody's going to notice they're going to say it's normal the same people who tell people well you know this person died of natural causes well, what is that what is natural what causes? does that mean right, right? i always wonder about now, that. doctors and medical people they know it's by an aneurysm that's what natural causes are aneurysms okay. that's not some natural cause that's a copper deficiency right um they know all of these things but what they're doing is controlling and, and by education, by big pharma, by products in the store, who's doing what, 
who can live in, because some people have to struggle to do what they have to do, right? Some people right. die early, nobody knows why. Doctors pronounce folks dead at uh, uh, different times, and they say it's normal. Stuff's not normal. Uh, people's DHEA is down, and they, you know, when your DHEA goes down to a certain level, you're dead anyway, right? And most people above the age of 45 have extremely low DHEA, dehydropendosterone. When that level really goes down, your cells degrade much faster. That's happening all over the world, right? Wow. If you know about nutrition, you can combat certain things, but it's in everything. It's in processed food, it's in sodas, it's in water. So it's a, it's it's in, a, it's a poison. It, it's You're talking about some toxic poison that's put into well, everything. Think, think about if you, your body has to have every element of this earth. It utilizes every element of the earth. They kill you by not giving you every element, only some. You're right. You're right. Okay. And that causes big malfunctions in the body that people live with, and they think it's normal, right? Yep. They think it's normal. Th these things are not normal. And so anyway, they've been doing this for a long time. So trying to kill somebody outright by this, this method, this method, that's that's a waste of money is foolish, right? They're doing it through the grocery store. Yes. All sorts of stuff. They're doing it in ways people wouldn't even think of. And it's been happening for a long time. All right, Mike. Now, there's another last question here, and it, it's kind of flowing right into where you're going, and that is, are they, is, is there a, a, an agenda to create a GMO population. And now, that, now I understand depopulization is part of the Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 of the UN. Eugenics is, uh, you know, genetically altering, let's say. Uh, is there a hybrid race or trans uh, transhumanistic race? Uh, you know, Nora, uh, Noah Harari talks about sapiens. He says that there's going to be a new species of humans he's right he's right is this right. is this actually an agenda in play right now it's been in play for a long okay. time how, how does it work can you help time. us understand it well it's um perhaps i'll tell you it would be nice if it were purely medical or something like that right but it's not okay i want everybody to take note of something and no i'm not racist well, I'll take that back. I'm racist against peas. I don't like peas. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm not racist. Okay. But think about something. Okay. In 1988, something took place. I don't know if everybody missed it or not, but something took place. The relationships, the counter relationships, and who, who dated who has started changing in 1988. Okay. It increased all the way up into the 1990s. And all of a sudden, you have a new type child dominating the schools, right? They're not black or white. They're not, they're right, not Asian. Right. They're not, they're, they're mixed. Right, right. Right. Now, if you take note of these mixed kids, they have certain characteristics, very specific characteristics. Here's the part people missed during the time when a new sensation and craze hit everybody, right? This alien abduction thing began. Okay. Right? It yeah. really, it really started to take off, but it was silent. What people did not know is that many people were going to their psychiatrist, talking to them in private. Now, I'm talking about high-profile people, governors, senators, all sorts of people were talking to, to folks about these incidences, right? Well, in every single case, they were tampering with people's reproductive organs. In every case, in every single case. Now... The book of Daniel, right, is is the sole reference that I like to use in this is the book of Daniel because it describes it very well. Now, if theologians won't like this, but I'm sorry, I have to go with what I got. I'm not a theologian. I'm the okay, guy from the okay. bushes. Anyway, okay. anyway, in a very special part of Daniel it said they would be in the last kingdom before the everlasting kingdom, they would mingle themselves with the seed of men, but would not cleave one to another. Yep. And that gave away a phrase because back in Genesis, they took unto themselves wives. Well, that's cleaving to someone. Right. As, as becoming one flesh. One flesh, right? yes. Marriage is one flesh. But in this case, they will not cleave one to another. They will mingle their seed with the seed of men. And that word men 
right? It's describing humanity, but the word them is left open on purpose. So it's referring to something that used to cleave to humanity because that word men literally means humanity. Humanity. So our, They will mingle their seed with the seed of humanity, yeah. but they will not marry, right? They will yeah. not marry. So who is that? The fallen angels. Yeah. I mean, that's what right? happened in Genesis so now, 6. That's what happened. Right. There. Okay. Right. So these, these, so women, and women have been having these menstrual issues, scar tissue, right? These weird pregnancies, all sorts of problems. I mean, they skyrocketed. The women couldn't talk to anybody, right? Right. Um, the abortion clinics also began to multiply back in these days. Do you know abortion clinics have special mandates? when they find certain types of tissue in a woman. Do you know that? I and it, know. it will weigh on the decision. Why? Because of this program, this, whatever is happening, something is happening with humanity. So this is beyond is mankind. Humanity. This is not mankind's agenda. This is higher than that, right? Yes. Yes, it is higher than that. And, and mankind helps, believe it or not. Yeah. Anyway, you have these new children who have no identification with Jesus Christ. That's a prop. That's unnatural. There, there, nobody is born a human being who does not know who Jesus is. Nobody had to teach any of your audience who Jesus was, who God is. Everybody knew there was a God. Everybody knew there was a Jesus, right? Right. Some of these new kids, they have no association with it. They have no association with the word. Well, God, are they like the Jesus. black eyed children or they, are, are we talking? No, about- they're, they're just, they're normal, but they have no association with certain things and they show high irritation, right? During times of prayer, these, these kids. Now, some of these kids are 23 years old. Some, uh, I'll take that back. 33 years old. Go some of these kids are 33, yeah, yeah. right? But they're becoming a little more specific now. And what they do, they, it, it's almost like, they replicate their activities in many different areas, and they all they seem to agree with the same things. Education facilities are bringing this up, right? Because they evaluate the children. They educate the children. They evaluate the children. They know exactly what's happening. These kids, are, something is different with them. Not all of them, but it's a lot out there. Is there it are reports the of DNA, children. Or, or is it because the DNA has been altered from this uh process this mingling sure of the seed well not only is it altered past ball but these kids they have a they have a discernment right and what i mean by discernment don't think they don't know what you're thinking about right they're very good with numbers very good with numbers um they agree to do specific things. I'm not fooled by anybody's niceness or kindness or anything else. They have zero association with Christ. Zero association with Christ. No thoughts of Christ. And on the on the other side of that, you have kids who have an association with Christ, right? Yeah. Who are they have a they have an eerie feeling about these other kids. So when you start talking to these counselors and things like that, because they're mandated to report specific things, um, just like doctors, when doctors find specific things, they have to contact elements of the DOD. They have to. Yeah. And the patient will never know. Nobody will ever know. But they contact, you know, elements of the so DOD. So you're not but- talking about now social, you know, you know, everyone can be shaped, you know, your, your, your social environment. Can, no, much for much but you're not talking that. about that you're saying it doesn't matter about the, the home they grew up in or the That's or right. the neighborhood That's they right. grew up in there, there's something dna been That's has right. been messed with that's affecting that's right. them even spiritually that's right that's right rich or poor christian or unbeliever believer doesn't matter if the somewhere down the line right the the parents have been tampered with and their parents have been tampered with. And their parents have been tampered with. Spiritual eugenics? Are we talking about here? I mean, I mean, I, I believe it's a duality. I, I believe duality, that they, okay. they're, they're different by they're different by their physiology, right? Okay. They're also different by their spirits are different. Yeah, they're, they're different also. These kids are listen, but they have heightened abilities and skill sets. Okay. Meaning, if you're if you're bothered about something, nine times out of ten, they can tell you what you're bothered about, right? Wow. Nine times out of ten, they can 
they have these old predictive things. Well, you're do. going, Jason. So nobody Moore. should nobody nobody should be fooled by that. You're I going, don't care if somebody you're going Jason, can tell my future or not. You're going Jason Bourne on me right now. I mean, well, this is absolute. This, <laughs> but I similar, believe, right? I believe these kids, all these kids that are coming up, right, that are getting into government and everything else, and they've been doing this. They're altering everything around us slowly but surely. Why do you think our governmental system with these new kids, with this? with this woke uh, movement, yeah, right? Yeah. With all these agendas that have gone forward, that are implemented, who in the world talked to the old people about this new stuff that the old people would pass the bill for the new stuff? Who's doing this? This comes from a young mind, not just a young mind, but a young mind that is inquisitive, smart, intelligent, and everything else. Our policies are changing to suit them. Mm. Mm. And you're right, because society now has to adapt to this woke movement, this these this, right. these agendas right. that seem to be. And it's even before they ever get to college. Now, it used to be I used to think, well, they're being indoctrinated at college. And they are. But this is happening before they ever get there. Maybe the social yep. media is part of that. Yep. Uh, you know, Well, I mean, social media is absolutely uh, part of that connectivity point. It allows them to meet each other. They connect in a weird go. way. There you go. You know, I was on a team one time, and, and we were talking about social media before Facebook came out. This is when Yahoo was young. They went over the demographic of the change of the world, because that's essentially when the borders of the world came down, right? When you have one kid from one country that can compare himself to another kid in another country, that started tension. That's, that's it started a deep rebellion because a kid over here that's oppressed said, why can't I go to the movies and watch a movie like those kids over there? And it caused. And we just lost Mike from around the world. So hang on, everybody. Okay, Mike. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, you you guys got that. I got the message. Uh, I think we <laughs> they sent us a message. <laughs> all right, all right, I got it. Well, Mike, let me ask you this question here as we're closing yes, up here, and and that is, these things are, uh, in some way, we're not, we're not, you know, almost like the X Files. I mean, we're going we're going into areas here that sometimes seems like impossible, but when you take a step back and look at it, you realize that technology. And uh, in in all areas, including eugenics or DNA manipulation or splicing, you know, or CRISPR or or, or cloning or these things, we've we're way past. We're, we're not even we're not we're not realizing just how far advanced we've right. become as a human race, That's and right. we've also come so far. We've gone so far from God that we don't even know if he exists or not. I mean, and that's part of this agenda, isn't it? To tear down people's faith in God and the creator, maybe start believing that you were born, you're created by an alien or whatever. How does people, how are we going to get people turned around these last days? How are we going to break through that barrier? Well, the Lord is going to help us out. Okay. He is, because if he doesn't, it's a lost cause. That's right. But I'll say this. I'll, I'll say this, Pastor Paul. These, these, these um, people should never forget those of you who believe in Christ. The Lord has his hand over you, which is why you're not dead. Amen. You're not dead because you saved your own skin. You're dead because the Lord did. He's not allowing. He will decide when you go. Nobody else can. Right. 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 Uh, and they have they, their stuff is of none effect on us that it would kill us. Right. So don't fear Amen. people who can take your life in this and the other but christians believers in christ they are the target that can never be forgotten everything that's happening in the world if you look at it just straightforward you're going to find it's against christianity mm. it's not against the islamic kingdoms it's not against the vedic no text. it's not every other religion actually is being lifted up but christianity you're right is being torn down and social media is a mechanism or tool by which they can reach all of you. They can, they want all Christians in their conversation to convert them, right? When social media came out, people won't, you don't have to admit this, but when it, when it came out, folks don't admit this. When it came out, people were drawn into conversations and things that were just purely an abomination and against the word of God. Yes. And they thought they were getting away with it. Until the Lord had you get caught or something like that happened, right? So 
the, the, the social media wrecked the spirit of many people. And if God didn't call those people back, we don't, you know, there's a lot of people that would be lost. The attack is against Christians, all these tools and everything else. They are very seductive. They're tools, yes, but they're very seductive because these folks out there, these things out there, they use it for evil purposes against those who believe in Christ. It's of no consequence to them, but it seems like their master goal is to draw in those who believe in Christ, right? To yes, debate, yes, to yes. draw them in, to corrupt and everything else. So yes. yeah, I'm in full agreement with you, Pastor, you know. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mike, I tell you what, this has been a fascinating broadcast. I mean, we, and I, you know, look, you, you, you answered the questions. Uh, there was about a hundred questions. I only picked 10 out of the hundred. Um, you really did. And you've really opened our eyes and you got me thinking again, you got us all thinking, but you do leave us with this great hope that it's in Jesus Christ that with him, with him, that is where our salvation lies. And that is powerful. And that, that can't be, you can't look, the devil can come at us with everything he's got, but he cannot defeat a true born again believer. We've got the power. In the name right. of Jesus, we got to keep our right. keep ourselves in there and Amen. keep going. Amen. Mike, all right, I appreciate you. You know, you know, the webinar is coming up March twenty second, so everybody better get their tickets. And uh, it's it's called Apocalyptic Signs, and boy, there's a lot of them out there, that, and a lot oh, of them yeah. we don't even know about. Is that right? That's that's right. That's absolutely right. Maybe we'll get some of those out of you during that. I'm webinar. sure we will. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, Mike. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming and being with us today. Passball, God bless you. It's always an honor. Thank you. The honor is mine. Believe me. Believe me. All right. God bless. God bless.